Okay, fantastic, and we're recording. What we're going to do today is look at IELTS speaking, and I'm going to talk to you about how to get towards IELTS 9. Maybe not necessarily in IELTS 9, but certainly how to boost your score because there's a way to do it. I took this test, and while I was taking the test, I had some ideas about how this is possible. It, because it's quite a deceptively simple task, IELTS speaking, basically three parts. Let's have a look at what they are. Well, the IELTS say that part one is introduction and interview, part two is called long term, and part three is discussion, but I think it's something different. I think it's more like this. Part one is small talk, part two you tell a story, and part three you discuss big ideas. If you think about the IELTS speaking uh, section like this, it makes it a lot easier because this is actually what you have to do. You small talk, then you tell a story, then with the examiner you discuss some big ideas. This is actually what you do. What does that mean? Well, let's have a look. Part one, small talk. There's basically one secret here and that is to elaborate, okay? to extend your answers, to not say yes or no, but to say yes, because, no, because, etc. You have to learn how to elaborate and extend, expand your answers. Let me give you an example. So when you walk in, you sit down with the examiner and she or he looks at your passport and asks you your name and your candidate number or whatever it is. Very, very uh, simple questions. Then the examiner will say something like, are you a student or do you work? And you must elaborate. Do not just say, I'm a student or yes, I work. You need to tell a little story here. You need to elaborate. You need to say, well, I'm not a student anymore because I recently graduated. And in fact, I've just taken up a new job, blah, 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 blah. You need to show off, and that's what elaborate means. It means to show off your language. And if the examiner asks you, where do you live, you don't just say, I live in Melbourne. No, you say, well, I live in Melbourne now, which is a really interesting, uh, vibrant place to live. Previously, I lived in a very small town, so the contrast from the small town to the city is quite interesting. You elaborate, you extend, you're showing off your language. If the ex what will happen next is quite interesting because it will sort of go from a logical progression of questions like, are you a student? Do you work? Where do you live? Then the examiner will ask you something like, what's the most important place in your hometown? And the conversation changes very quickly. For example, when I did my IELTS speaking, the examiner asked me, are you a student or do you work? Where do you live? And then she asked me, do you like going to the cinema? And I thought, what? Why would you ask me that? That doesn't make sense. But it's part of the IELTS. They sort of, you transition very quickly from some uh, relevant questions to what seems like irrelevant questions. But you need to think fast. You need to say, the cinema well, in fact, not really. However, my girlfriend likes going to the cinema, so I often go with her. Personally, I would prefer to just stay home and watch videos on Netflix. Whatever, that's how you answer that. You need to be flexible, nimble, because the questions will change quite quickly and seemingly uh, they will be irrelevant. Okay, then, so like for a question like what kinds of jobs do people do in your hometown, again, you elaborate. You say, well, there's a variety of industry in my hometown, including you know, farming, including uh, factory work, etc. And you expand and you elaborate and you talk. You answer the question, but you just elaborate. Right, part two, I think, is probably the hardest part. It's called, IELTS call it the long term. This is where you have one minute to prepare to speak for two minutes. Now, you can think about it as the long term or you can think about it as telling a story because this is what I think you have to do is just tell a story. 
And when you think about it like that, it makes it easier. But you need to tell a good story. You can't just tell a boring story. If you really want to increase your points, you need to tell a good story. So you need to embellish. What embellish means is basically you need to lie. Now, think of this. The IELTS is a test of your language. There's no reason why you cannot lie. You're not really, in fact, I would say you're not actually lying. You're just telling a story. You're just showing off your language. And if you don't have a good story to tell, well, it will decrease your scores. How do you tell a good story? You need to embellish. Embellish means that you make a story more interesting by adding extra details that are often untrue. In other words, to embellish means to add untrue details. This is fine. You should do this, in fact, because if you don't, you'll probably tell a boring story and boring stories won't get you the grades that you need. There's nothing in IELTS that say you're not allowed to lie. It's not lying. It's embellishing. They're different. You're telling a story and you're just adding extra details to your story to make it more interesting. Simple as that. That's how you increase your score. I should say that I actually got a nine, IELTS nine in speaking. Unsurprising, I'm a native speaker, but still, these, uh, these tips work. While you're telling the story, because you have to speak for two minutes, you also need to digress. Digress means that you leave the main topic of conversation temporarily, okay? What you're given for this, this part of, for part two is a task card with three dot points and you have to speak for two minutes on three or four dot points. That's really hard if you don't digress. So you need to temporarily speak about other things, but still relevant things. That's digression. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to tell you what happened to me in part two. So in part two, this is the task card that I was given. It says, talk about a time you were recently angry. And I thought, oh my God, this is very personal. You should say, who or what made you angry? Where and when it was? how angry you were, and explain whether or not it was resolved, and if so, how. Whoa, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to talk to this woman about this personal experience of mine. But then I realized, well, I can just embellish. I don't need to tell the truth. So I did it. I made up a story. I used an event which was relevant to this, but I extended it. I embellished and I digressed and I told a very interesting story that was not 100% true. That's how I did it. Because I, to be honest, I didn't want to tell the IELTS examiner about my personal feelings of being angry. It was weird. I think this is a weird topic card. But anyway, if you use the embellished thing, you don't need to tell the truth. You're just using your language. You're, you're, you're demonstrating your language, okay? So I told my story and I went through each of the little dot points or the tasks on the card and I had a beginning, I had a middle and I had an end, right? Now I want you to try. I want you to use this task card and I want you to tell a story, okay? And I want you to... Uh, embellish the story. I want you to tell innocent lies. I also want you to digress. So when you talk about where you got it from, oh, sorry, let's, let's look at it first and I'll tell you how to embellish and digress. Describe something you own which is important to you. Okay, let's say, let's say it's a watch. You should say where you got it from, how long you have had it. Uh, this should say, who you use it for, how you use it, maybe. I'm sorry, that's a mistake. How you use it and explain why it's important to you. So what you might want to do is say, today I'm going to be speaking about my watch, which is, which is a very important object to me. Now what I'm going to do, my, the story of my watch is very boring. So I'm going to just create a story. 
And I'm going to let my mind wander and I'm going to use good language to tell this story. I got it from my grandmother who was a very interesting woman and she was an art teacher. You can see I'm digressing. I'm talking about where I got it from, but I'm talking about my grandmother. She gave it to me on my 21st birthday, which was a very important date for me because it symbolizes growth into adulthood. I'm digressing. I'm talking about this still, but I'm, I'm, I'm digressing off the topic slightly, but I will come back to the topic and that's critical. How long have you had it? I've had the watch now because I'm 32 for 11 years. And in fact, I haven't yet replaced the battery because I haven't needed to because it's a wind up watch. I'm digressing. In fact, this does have a battery. I'm just using my language and telling a story and whatever thoughts come into my mind, I speak and I speak them clearly and I speak them grammatically and it does not matter about the content, whether the content's true or not. That's critical. So I'm embellishing, I'm telling a story and I'm digressing, I'm going off topic and then coming back to the topic. Because what you'll find is it's very difficult to speak for two minutes without digressing for this task. Um, right, now I want you to do it, okay? I want you to describe something you own, which is important to you. You should say where you got it from, how long you've had it. Don't worry about number three, I'm sorry, that's a mistake. Let me draw a line through this. And I want you to explain why it's important to you. I'm going to give you just 20 seconds to think about this. Then I want you to tell me a great story, okay, about something you own. 20 seconds to prepare starts now. I want you to speak, by the way. Okay, your time starts now. I want you to speak for one minute and 30 seconds. I will stop you. Three, two, one, start. That's 30 seconds. Keep going, embellish, digress. That's one minute, so I want you to speak for 30 more seconds, embellish, digress. Five, four, three, two, one, Usually you speak for about one minute, 30, two minutes. The examiner will stop you. Don't feel bad if the examiner stops you. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. The examiner just wants to move on, okay? Good, I hope that worked. I hope that worked. You need to imagine that you're just telling a story to a good friend, okay? And you wanna make this story as interesting as possible. Um, let's just check the chat here. Okay, fine. Let's move on. Whoops, let me just clear my picture here. Okay, you will then move on to part three where you need to discuss big ideas. Okay, this is a discussion between you and the examiner. And what you want to do is discuss big ideas. 
You don't want to sound simple here. You want to sound philosophical. You want to discuss abstract ideas, and I'll tell you why. So here you need to elaborate as you did in part one, okay? You need to extend your sentences, not yes, no answers. Extend, elaborate. You also can embellish, that's fine. You can talk about things that are not 100% true. It doesn't matter, it's just a language test. But you need to be thoughtful. If you're not answering with thoughtful, interesting ideas, your score will re reduce. But what does that mean? Whoops, sorry. What does that mean to have thoughtful ideas and how does that affect language? Well, let me explain. I'll tell you about that. Okay, here's the pyramid. Here's an IELTS 9, right at the top of the pyramid. Here's an IELTS 6 in the middle of the pyramid. And down here is IELTS 4, 3, 2, 1, etc. What's the difference? Well, an IELTS 9 speaker has abstract ideas. Ideas that are interesting and thoughtful and philosophical, okay? And IELTS 4 has basic ideas that are not interesting, that are concrete, that are superficial, not that interesting. Now, what's the relationship between ideas and language? Well, to have abstract ideas, you need to use abstract language, okay? And to have Basic ideas, well, you only need basic language. And what you need to achieve in IELTS 9 is abstract language, less common language, interesting language. Abstract ideas equal abstract language, okay? You need to have the idea first, and the language will come and then describe that idea to the examiner. This is how language works in your brain. The idea always comes first, then the language appears to describe the idea. Now, what's abstract language? Well, abstract language means that the, the words that you use are less common and more precise. Less common, more precise words. And the grammar you use is more varied, different types of grammar, different sentence types, but it's 100% accurate. So words and grammar, less common, more precise words, more varied but accurate grammar, equal abstract language. Abstract language will lead you to an IELTS 9. Basic language will lead you to an IELTS 4, 5 or 6 max, okay? Let me tell you what happened to me. So this was my uh, task card and the discussion leads on from the task card. Okay, um, the questions that the examiner asked me were, how can you control anger? And what do you think about the mind-body relationship? Now, I understood that I needed to elaborate, embellish, and be thoughtful, okay? So when she asked me, how can you control anger? I did not say, um, I don't know, you could breathe deeply. No, I didn't say that. I talked to her and I discussed some interesting ideas. I said, well, there are many different theories about anger, anger control, which includes sort of cognitive behavioral therapy or deep breathing or meditation, etc. But I believe that being angry is perfectly natural. In fact, I think being angry actually feels good. I talked to her, I, I talked about some interesting ideas. I said, the expression of anger is fine as long as you're not hurting other people. For example, when I play sport, I express my anger, but only in the rules of the game. So nobody gets hurt, but I actually, um, I, I, <laughs> I'm struggling for the word here, I express that aggression in the rules of the game. So I talked to her about this. Okay, I, I was thoughtful, I was kind of philosophical, I had interesting ideas. And then she asked me, what do you think about the mind-body relationship? And I said to her, no doubt, I think there is a relationship between the mind and the body. In fact, when you're angry, you can feel it in your physical body. It's not just mental phenomena. The body 
including the organs and the adrenal glands. And I talked to her about biology and I talked to her about stuff like this. So you, you, first of all, you need to have a knowledge background so you can have these ideas, but you probably have that knowledge background in your first language. You need to be able to express those ideas in English. Okay. I mean, this is, that's what it comes down to. You need to be able to have the ideas, then you need to be able to express them. Anyway, I want you to try now. I want you back on this, describe something you own, which is important to you. Here are some discussion questions related to this, and I'm going to give you some time and I want you to give me some thoughtful answers where you elaborate, you embellish and you're philosophical. You have interesting ideas on them. Don't give me boring ideas. I want interesting, thoughtful ideas. Question one, I'm going to give you uh, 20 seconds to speak about question one, okay? Question one is, what kind of things give status to people in your country? Your time starts now. Okay, that's, I gave you 30 seconds. Maybe I'll give you 30 seconds. Um, okay, let me just check the chat here. I'm getting a few. Asan says, is it okay to ask for clarification from the examiner if you don't understand the question? Yes, that's fine. You can talk to the examiner. You can say, sorry, examiner, what, does, uh, what do you mean by status? And the examiner will say, well, status means uh, your rank in society. So yes, you can ask the examiner, absolutely. Anyway, question two, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. I want you to give me a very thoughtful, interesting answer where you embellish and you, di uh, and you are thoughtful, okay? Question two. Have things changed in your country since your parents' time? Your time starts now. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Uh, do you think advertising influences what people buy? Your time starts now. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. How did that go? Did that help you? I hope it did. I hope it did. All right. Let's just quickly talk about what the examiners. Oh, good. Aaron Dam said it was a very short time. 30 seconds was not long enough. Good. Arindam, remember that part three is a discussion, so you don't want to speak for too long. Don't go on and on and on and on. I want you to speak meaningfully for as long as you can and then stop because the examiner will ask you another question. So part two, you need to speak for two, for two minutes. But part three, you're having a discussion. However, the examiner will ask you questions, not you ask the examiner questions. Cool, everyone else said that that was helpful, so that's excellent. 
Right, so just to recap, before I talk about the criteria, there are three parts to IELTS speaking, and I believe that they are small talk, where you need to elaborate. That's it, just elaborate. Then you tell a story, and you need to embellish your story, adding extra details that may not be true, and you need to digress. You need to go off topic, but then come back to the topic, okay? That's part two. Part three is the discussion, and you need to be thoughtful. You need to give interesting, philosophical, abstract answers because your thoughts come first and your language should follow. You need to have high, interesting thoughts, okay? That's how you get an IELTS 9 or close to an IELTS 9. Let's have a look at the criteria. Now, this is what the examiner is listening for while you're speaking. Four things. First, fluency and coherence. I'll explain these in a second. Vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. Fluency and coherence means you speak smoothly. It means you speak at a moderate pace, not too quickly, not too slowly. You don't, um, you don't re, you don't, you don't re, you don't re, you don't restart sentences. You start a sentence and you finish that sentence. You really he hesa, 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 you really hesitate. And if you do, it's only because you're looking for an idea, not for a word or, or, or grammar, okay? It's okay to hesitate if you're thinking because you're trying to find that big idea, that's okay. But if you hesitate because you are trying to find a particular word or grammar, that means you're going to get into trouble. Fluency and coherence, your sentences are well formed from beginning to end. You structure your speech appropriately from beginning to end. Remember, you're telling the story. All stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You can digress, but you come back to that story. You develop the topics fully and appropriately. That's what the story is about. Second thing the examiners listen for is your vocabulary. You need to be flexible. That means that you can explain your ideas using the words, uh, using appropriate words. Your vocabulary is precise. Some words are more precise than others, okay? You need to be able to choose and use words that are precise. And here you use less common words. When do you use less common words? When you're speaking about something basic or something abstract? The answer is abstract. When you're discussing big, interesting philosophical ideas, you naturally use less common words. Um, this means idiomatic language naturally and accurately. It means your phrases, the way you speak is not translated directly from your first language. It's in fact sounds natural in English. Grammar, you use a variety of grammar easily and appropriately. So you're not hesitating, thinking how to put that idea into a sentence that comes to you easily. You speak accurately. You are allowed to make the occasional mistake or slip. That's okay. Even native English speakers sometimes make mistakes. Pronunciation, what does this mean? This means you are clear and accurate when you speak the words, when you say the words. What it really means though, is that it's effortless to understand you. That if I'm listening to you, I can understand you without effort, okay? If I have to struggle to understand you, if I'm sort of thinking, what? I, I don't quite get that, that's a problem. Your pronunciation should be effortless, okay? Cool, all right. We'll go to questions in a second, but what I first want to talk to you about is how to prepare for IELTS. This is how you get to IELTS success. There are one, two, three, four, five, six steps along the way. The first thing you need to do, well, this is what we do at e2language.com. When you register or upgrade your account, you get a personalized study plan consultation where a teacher like me will sit with you, talk to you about your previous test scores, talk to you about your language weaknesses, and I will write you a document that will, that will uh, set the pathway for you, that will get you going, keep you motivated, and get you to success. 
then it's up to you for the next three steps because you need to practice your grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. They are the building blocks of the language. And we have hundreds and hundreds of lessons on e2language.com to help you. Then you come across and you do the methods, tips, and strategy classes like this one here. We have live daily classes. Then you must practice and we have hundreds and hundreds of questions on e2language.com that are exactly the same or replicate the IELTS questions. So that you apply your method your understanding of the methods to practice questions. Then you come back and you meet the teacher again because you've done a lot of skill building here and practice questions. And you'll meet the teacher for speaking or writing or reading or listening and the teacher will tell you, give you feedback, expert feedback, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. Then we have live mock tests where you can actually sit under test conditions and practice doing an exam then you will be ready for test day, okay? Here I have a, a success story from one of the students on e2language.com. In fact, we have dozens and dozens of these. If you read our Facebook page, you'll see that we are now helping, almost getting up to hundreds and hundreds of people, helping them to pass their exams, okay? Cool, let's go to questions. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat. Let's have a look. Um, okay, Irvi says, if we use simple sentences in part two, will the examiner cut my mark? Yes, when you're telling the story, you, you don't need to use complex sentences, but you should use a variety of different sentences. You should use interesting vocabulary and you should use different types of grammar. Above all, your story should be interesting. Your story will be interesting if you use good vocabulary and grammar. So aim for interesting and let the language follow, okay? Um, Arindam is worried about the, the time. For, for part two, the time is, you, you just, just tell the story, that's fine. And for part three in the discussion, just be thoughtful, have interesting thoughts, interesting discussions. You have to remember that the IELTS examiner sits there every day and listens to the same thing every day. So if you have interesting thoughts, you will get a higher grade because your language will be more interesting. Naveen has asked, what should I do so that I don't freeze in the cue card in, in part two? Interestingly, Naveen, I froze in part two. When the examiner asked me about my personal experience of anger, I froze. And that's when I realized that it doesn't matter. You just tell a story. And in that story, you can embellish. You don't need to tell the truth because it's not about truth. It's about using language. So don't worry about freezing because you don't have to tell the truth. You just need to speak and tell a great story. Cool. All right. I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for coming along. Tomorrow you will see Jamal for listening. So, uh, sorry, reading tomorrow. So make sure you tune in. Uh, please, if you have any friends doing IELTS, feel free to share e2language.com with them. Get them to come, come across to the webinars. And uh, yes, all good. Practice, upgrade, we will help you out. Cool, thank you very much, see you.